let's remember where the kidneys are actually located. If you look at this image of half of a body, you can see that our kidneys are, uh, this is the general location. Check this fluffy thing out on top. What's that? Those are your adrenal glands. Your adrenal glands sit on top of the kidney itself. Now, uh, kidneys, interestingly, are retroperitoneal. Do you remember that word when we were talking about the digestive system? They're actually located behind or posterior to the parietal peritoneum that, that surrounds the abdominal cavity. That means that they only have parietal peritoneum covering one side of them, and it's the anterior side of the kidney. So they're actually found behind that. Uh, let's look, I think that's everything that you need to know here. Okay, so let's take a look at a kidney. And not only are we gonna look at this picture, but I'm gonna draw you a picture as well, just so that you, maybe I won't draw you, because look, here it is right here. We'll see what we're going to do. I don't know what we're gonna do. Do I ever? No. This whole structure is the kidney. Remember what the purpose of the kidney was? Our whole goal was to filter fluid, blood, the plasma out of the blood, and, and make, basically use that plasma to make urine, hopefully removing just the things that we don't want in the system. So let's label some parts of this kidney. First of all, uh, this, can you see how my kidney has two layers? Do you see how if I draw a line right here, I'm actually drawing, I'm like separating the kidney into two pieces. Well, this part of the kidney that's between the outer edge, but it, it's like, it's an outer layer. It's like a crust, a kidney crust. That's actually called the cortex. T-E-X, that says cortex. And then this inner part that contains like these little triangles or pyramids. This is called the medulla. This is gonna be relevant for us when we start looking at the functional unit of a kidney. Like what's the main structure in a kidney that actually does the filtering. It's gonna be relevant because we're gonna place those in here in relationship to the cortex and the medulla of an entire kidney organ. Now, let's look at some other things that we need to uh, identify. First of all, this structure right here, this is a renal pyramid. Again, remember, what's our whole purpose? We're filtering out the blood. And if you look at the base of every renal pyramid, you have a tube. Do you agree with that? Look at that tube. And look at how all of these tubes, basically a renal pyramid dumps or empties into a particular tube. And each tube, each tube at the base of a renal pyramid is called a minor calyx. So the pyramids are doing filtering, they're filtering the blood, and then hopefully reabsorbing the good stuff. And then whatever's left over becomes urine and it dumps into the minor calyx right here. Now, minor calyces, that's plural for calyx, minor calyces dump also into, what would you call them? Like a couple of minor calyces dump into, of course, a major calyx. So you can imagine that a single re renal pyramid is gonna dump into a minor calyx. A couple of minor calyces are going to dump into a major calyx. The major calyx, zzz, the major calyces, dump, into the renal pelvis. I should have done that in another color. Undo. Let's do it in blue. 
this right here. It's not a great color. Let's try. Should we go yellow? Haha, <laughs> nice. Do you see how my little green guys are dumping in to the yellow guy? But now you can't read this. But this is the renal pelvis. Can you read that? It says renal pelvis. And I'm putting it in yellow because I put it in yellow here. Now the renal pelvis collects all the pre-P. By the time it gets to the renal pelvis, guess what? There's no modification. But by the time it gets to the minor calyx, there's no, you're not going to reabsorb any of the fluid. In fact, think about this. How irritating is it to drink lots of water because you were told that, you know, we have to drink lots of water to keep ourselves hydrated? And so you do it, and then you're like, dude, really? I have to go pee again and again and again, and you just pee out all that water that you just drank? Once the pee, once the pre-pee gets to the minor calyx, you cannot reabsorb that water. You can't modify that fluid that is coming out of the minor calyx. It's too late. If the fluid is still found in here in these renal pyramids, you can totally modify it. You can be like, dude, I thought that I was really thirsty, but really my blood needs me to pee out that water. Awesome. You can make that adjustment. You can make the adjustment that I thought that I didn't need any water, but actually I do not want to pee out any water at all. And you can reabsorb all that water. When you reabsorb water from the filtrate, your pee gets like neon orange. When you, uh, leave lots of water in the filtrate, then your pee looks like you just drank water and then peed it out. Doesn't really make sense why you would do that, right? I don't think it makes any sense. Okay, once we dump into the renal pelvis, where, look at this. I'll try to make it a color that you can actually see. Where are we gonna empty into? A tube. A single tube. Guess what this tube is called? It's called the ureter. Now I'm going to take a second to draw you a couple of kidneys. Look, here's one kidney. Here's another kidney. And I'm going to draw you a ureter coming out of each kidney. Of course, where do the ureters? Okay, so the ureters are getting filled with pre -pee. Except, as we've already said, anything beyond the minor calyx, it, we can't modify it anymore. So really, for all intents and purposes, it's pee now. So now we have all this pee, and it's going in the ureter. Now where's it going to go? Into your, well, I won't even try and guess what you might possibly be thinking. Instead, I'm going to tell you, look, I've got a little sack right here. What's that sack called? This is the bladder. I almost called it something else. And these guys, what were these tubes called? These are my ureters. You have two ureters, one from each kidney. The kidney has not just a ureter coming out of this area, this little root here. It also has some arteries bringing blood into the kidney. And it has some veins taking blood away from the kidney. When we look at Linda and her torso, you'll be able to see the artery and the vein and the ureter coming out of each kidney. So we took it to the bladder. Now what happens to it? It just hangs out, right? And grows and grows and grows until what? Dude, it can't hold it anymore. How do we get it out? All of us, boys and girls, have the next tube. We just have it packaged slightly different. But it is the urethra. We all pee through our urethras. The ladies do nothing else through our urethras. We only pee through our urethras. The fellas, they've got some reproductive function that happens using their urethras. That's cool, you know. I will not start talking about reproductive systems yet. I will stay focused. All right, did we do the anatomy of the, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. sure. 
think that's totally clear. Oh, there is something else I want to tell you. Just for the fun of it. Just for the fun of it. This hole number one, hole number two, hole number three. We used to have a prep of a bladder with some kidneys, and we don't anymore. But I kind of feel like, dude, let's go into Myra and see if we can check out her bladder. Um, because this right here is called the trigone. Trigone. It's the opening of the two ureters and the urethra. And you can actually see it. They're, they're like little holes on the inside of the bladder bag. All right. I think that's everything gross anatomy that we need to do for, uh, sure. All right. So now we get to go to my favorite part, which are the functional units of like the filters that actually function in the kidney. And that is the nephron. Let's talk about that next. Our kidneys are highly vascular organs. Uh, that's why they look so red inside. After all, our two little kidneys have to filter through our entire blood supply, and as such, we receive about 20% of our cardiac output every time our heart contracts. And so if the standard American diet is so toxic to the blood vessels in our heart, brain, and pelvis, leading to heart attack, stroke, and sexual dysfunction, what might it be doing to our kidneys? Researchers at Harvard recently put that question to the test. Thousands of women and their diets and their kidney function were followed for a decade. What they're looking for is the presence of protein in the urine, known as microalbuminuria. There's not supposed to be any protein in our urine. I mean, the whole point of our kidneys is to keep the good stuff in our blood and get rid of the bad. It's supposed to hold on to protein, and if it doesn't, that's a sign our kidneys are starting to fail. There were three significant risk factors for declining kidney function in these women, none of which come as a surprise given that we're talking about clogged and inflamed blood vessels. Specifically, diets higher in animal protein, animal fat, and cholesterol may be associated with microalbuminuria, failing kidneys. No such association was found for plant protein or plant fat. And microalbuminuria is a kind of canary in a coal mine, telling you there's something definitely wrong with your blood vessels. Microalbuminuria and uh, modest decrements in kidney function are powerfully associated with subsequent overt kidney disease, cardiovascular risk, and all-cause mortality, meaning a shortened lifespan. In summary, diets lower in animal protein, animal fat, and cholesterol may be